Welcome to the very first episode of Full House Rewind. I'm your host, Dave Coulier. Jeff Franklin is our guest on the show today, and he'll be joining us shortly. This show is as much about Full House as it is about you, the fans. Full House has been on the air since we premiered on ABC in 1987. The show went on to worldwide syndication in over 100 countries and is now streaming everywhere on planet Earth. Here's something else that you might find interesting, maybe even a little weird. I have never watched Full House. I know, I know. So this is going to be an eye-opening journey for me as I travel through each episode with you. There's going to be so many memories and stories, and I hope to share all of them with you. Behind the scenes, on the stage at Lorimar Studios and Warner Brothers, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to have some very special guests along the way. But really, this show is for you, the Full House audience, who we love so dearly. And with that, let's get to the show. Oh, somebody's here. Hi, Dave. Hey, look, it's my buddy Comet. What's going on, buddy? Can I just say, this is the greatest lawn out here. I could lay under that tree for hours. (gasps) And you know what else? I saw a squirrel. That's great, Comet. Well... I just wanted to say congratulations on the new show. I'm probably going to stop by every day. Okay, love you, Dave. (laughs) Well, thank you, Comet. I love you, too. (laughs) Today, we're going to be talking about the pilot episode, also known as our very first episode. Here's what it says about our very first episode on IMDb. When Danny Tanner's wife, Pamela, is killed in an auto accident, he finds himself left all alone to raise his three daughters. DJ, Stephanie, and baby Michelle. Fortunately, Danny's hair-obsessed rock star brother-in-law, Jesse Cochran, along with Danny's flamboyant, cartoon-loving friend, Joey Gladstone, move in to help Danny raise his girls. On the first day, DJ runs away, and Jesse and Joey find extreme difficulty and anxiety in changing Michelle. There's some very funny scenes in the pilot. The scene where Joey and Jesse change Michelle's diaper and the scene where Stephanie is hanging from the drapes in the girls' room. We like to hear what you think about the pilot episode, so just shoot us an email at fullhouserewind at podcode.us. You've got messages. Oh, we're already getting messages on our 1990s answering machine. Hey, Dave, it's me, Bullwinkle. And me, Rocket J. Squirrel. Congratulations on your new show, and now, a little poem. Spider, spider on the wall, don't you have any brains at all? Don't you see the wall's just been plastered? Don't you see that, you little be- Bullwinkle! Spider, I wasn't going to say it. Yes, you were. In fact, there's a couple of times... (laughs) Well, that was nice. Now, as I was saying... You've got messages. another message. Hey, Dave, it's me, Scooby-Doo. Congratulations on your new show. (laughs) Wow, Scooby-Doo, that's really cool. Hey, Dave? Yes, Comet? Was that Scooby-Doo? Sure was. (gasps) Is he coming over to play with me? Maybe one of these days. Okay, love you, Dave. I love you too, Comet. And I love our very first special guest, Jeff Franklin. Full House would not have happened without this guy because he's the creator of Full House. He's our Full House leader, captain of the ship, and I get to call him a really close friend and a brother. Here's what Jeff Franklin looked like when Full House was on the air. Please welcome the super awesome, super talented Jeff Franklin. Hi, Jeff. (laughs) Hi, Dave. You're bi-coastal now. You're you're Miami. You're here. You got your outrageous house here up in up in the Hollywood Hills. Are you still trying to sell that? I am. I, I am. can't afford it, but I would love I, to. I'd love I to. I think have the whole it. cast should pitch in. Should pitch in and move and in we there. We all move in there together. And then Come we on. Have, yes. <laughs> I would. I would love it. We'll get. We'll get some of the crew. Property. Bob. Critter. Sean. We'll get all those guys. So, are you back and forth a lot? Are you? Because you just flew in like yeah, a I mean days I, ago, right? I I still love L.A. I live in Miami, but um, but I'm here all the time. Are you you're building another house in Miami too, right? Uh, maybe not sure yet. Well, didn't you uh, you told me that you bought a piece of property on this 
on this crazy island. Yeah, I have a I have a piece of property, but right. I'm not sure if I'm gonna build. Yeah, because you built two houses here in L.A. Two houses here in L.A. Three houses here in <laughs> three LA, in L.A. and one in San Francisco. So you're done with that? Yes, you did. <laughs> so so Jeff bought the house in San Francisco, the full house house. Is that on Gerard? What street no, is that? No, it's, it's on, on Broderick. Broderick. The don't, house where all the love fans us plugging that again. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, where all the fans show up and we have our hands in cement in the backyard. Yeah, I bought the house because they wouldn't let us go up and shoot there when we were doing Fuller House. <laughs> right, and I was mad. And so you then, bought the house, and then the house came up for sale, <laughs> and I. I think I went up there with a mustache and sunglasses <laughs> and, a, and a beret or something and, and bought the house. Is there any way you could get mad today and buy me a jet or something? I don't see that happening. You don't see that happening. No. It's got to be pretty amazing for you that none of this exists. This show, Full House, Rewind doesn't exist. My career probably doesn't exist. You created Full House and you made a major impact on people's lives. I mean, that's got to feel pretty amazing to be here today. We're sitting here and yeah. we get to talk about it. it. It is amazing. I mean, it's the most significant thing that's happened in my life for sure. I mean, I'm so proud of the show and so incredibly fortunate uh, to have been a part of that. Uh, yeah, That's how I feel. I, I feel yeah. the same way. It's been seen by over one billion people that's like one out of every eight or nine people on the planet that's crazy have watched the show and on TikTok, there's five over five billion hashtags about full house on really? TikTok, which is crazy that's like half of the planet it's pretty amazing when you think of the impact and the impact that it's had on on people's lives who were not only kids during the time that the show was airing in the 80s and 90s but it's become kind of multi-generational with people those kids grew up and now their kids are watching it that's pretty amazing and i think we're almost at the point where the grandkids are watching it <laughs> yeah mean, I, yeah it, it's amazing a couple of years another full house fan is born and and uh it just keeps going yeah because because we were talking before we we started the show here it's been since 1987 36 years we've known each other and I kind of want to just, I, I wanted to have you on the very first episode of Full House Rewind, because first of all, you impacted my life so much in such a positive way with my career. And, and it was such an incredible experience from, you know, being cast on the show to shooting the pilot to all those seasons, eight seasons on ABC. It was really an amazing journey for me that uh, keeps giving back in my life. So I, you know, so I probably haven't thanked you enough. Ah, um, you have. <laughs> but it was truly a blast. And and um, I'd really just, I kind of want to go back to the very beginning, you know, because your original concept of the show was called House of Comics. Our listeners and our viewers are going to love to hear the story of how that changed into Full House. House of Comics was originally supposed to be a show that wouldn't sell. I got into a <laughs> dispute with Lorimar. They, uh, I was there under a screenwriting deal, and uh, they shut down their movie division, and they decided not to pay me. <laughs> and so I thought that was not cool. There was, they still were a billion-dollar company. So anyway, we finally worked out something where I would pitch a show for them, and if it didn't sell, then they would pay me. So right. I was trying to come up with something that wouldn't sell. So <laughs> it's kind of like the producers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Now, actually, now it's a great idea for a show. Three stand-up comics play themselves, <laughs> share a house, very curb your enthusiasm. We just uh, that would sell now. You heard it first, yeah. right here on Full House Rewind. So you get <laughs> Chappelle, you get Bill Burr. Yeah. Who else are you going to have? Who's the third guy? Like, uh, get Sebastian. Throw yeah. him in there. Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, that's a show. Yeah, three young stand-ups sharing a house. That's a, that's a show now. That's a show. But in those days, that didn't exist. So people were asking me questions like, well, who are the characters? Like, whoever we hire. Right. What are the stories? Whatever's going on in their life. <laughs> well, this is the laziest show we've ever heard. You're making up nothing. Did you tell me one time that you came up with the idea like, 
in the elevator on the way up there. Yeah, it was kind of that, that was that's uh, probably not. We were maybe exactly. with some people that 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 was a good story at the time. Basically, I was going to go pitch House of Comics, and they called me and and uh, Lorimar called and said, "Well, ABC is happy to meet with you, but." they were uh they're really looking for a family show so is there any way you can tr turn this thing into some kind of family sitcom right. and i was like oh okay maybe one so, of the guys has some kids they're all raising kids and that sort of morphed slowly into full house so you're putting the show together now they give you a green light who who do you go after first was was stamos like the first guy you thought of or who well, was ca actually cast first in your mind the first person to be cast was jody sweeten uh miller boyette had the show called valerie and right. she had just done a guest shot at four years old where she was just adorable they showed and me brilliant. the clip yeah and uh i'm like oh this is this is shirley temple incarnate like what <laughs> is going on with this little girl she's like knocking jokes out of the park like okay and so we sent Jody the script and she, you know, I don't know if it was, if she read it or it was read to her, but you know, she, she sat there with a cigar and her <laughs> cognac and said, with uh, her agent and her manager yeah. <laughs> letting her out of the limo. Yeah. So she said, uh, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and wow. So Jody was the first. She cast a four-year-old first. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. I remembered our first table read. We were at some hotel on Wilshire Boulevard. Do you remember that? It was the Century Plaza Hotel. Century Plaza. And we had it. We had our very first table read where there's a room full of studio and network executives right. and everybody who could possibly be there. They were all there to see Stamos, I think. But um, <laughs> they weren't there but, to see me, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> An unknown comic. But yeah, there was probably 100 people in the room. And yeah. Jody just stole. Stole the show. Stole the whole thing. And I remember walking out with John. He's like, the whole show's going to be her. We we can't do this. <laughs> Remember, didn't he? Did he tell you anything after that day? Like you know, uh, this little girl, you know, was a scene stealer or anything like that? Because well, I know John was always in your ear about his ideas for the show. I learned this much later that he was so upset about having to play second fiddle to these really <laughs> funny kids that he went out and called his agent and said, "Ah, this is a mistake. Get me off the show." And then. <laughs> And they talked him down and, you know, eventually he made his peace with the fact that he's working with the uh, kids and animals and uh, being upstage WC constantly. Fields, yeah, yeah all yeah. over again. I remember I had met you through Gary Shandling. I have no memory of that. Was it at the audition? Because I, so. I remember either, I think you knew Gary already. Oh, I was. Yeah. Very, I was working on It's Gary Shandling. It's Gary Shandling's show. Shandling at the show. Time, but Gary was the person who taught me how to write sitcoms when I was 23 years old. That's pretty amazing. I, I mean, remember we you were telling friends me that. Before he, before he was a stand-up, he was a writer on Welcome Back, Cotter. Right. And we were in an improv class together and became friends. And he actually was the one that said to me, he goes, Jeff, you are not that funny. Because <laughs> I was in an improv but class. But he did it whiny. Jeff, yeah. you're not that it, funny. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, 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 how's my hair? But he said, yeah, you, you, you know, you have a funny brain. So you, you, should be a, you should be a sitcom writer. I think that's where you should. And taught me how to do it. Changed my whole life. So then I remember my audition coming in, and it was uh, Fern Champion, Pamela Basker, you, Tom Miller, and Bob Boyette. And I remember walking in. I had my pages, and I, I did my scene. And then I was leaving, and Tom Miller stopped me. I think I did some voices. I did Kermit the Frog. I threw some stuff in, and and I was trying to like show you guys what I could do. You know that I'm I'm more than just an actor. I can do voices <laughs> and characters. And so Tom Miller stopped me. And he said, "Wait a second. Can I'd like you to read for the father." And I said, <laughs> "Okay, give me the sides." And I went out, studied the sides for the dad, and uh, I came back in and 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 well, read that too. You are Joey Gladstone. I mean, that was the, <laughs> as a writer, that's that's a miracle day where somebody walks in and is the character that you wrote on the page. I mean, there was no question. We found our guy, we were done. 
Yeah, and we're all excited in the room, and you can just feel it. Right. And we're just waiting for you to leave so we could go make an offer. <laughs> and suddenly, Tom is like saying, "Yeah, go read for the dad." And we're all looking around, like eyes are rolling, like, "What is this about?" And you know, you were a good sport about it. You went out, you learned a whole nother character. <laughs> at that came point, back in, got no laughs at all. None, none. Uh, as as the dad, and walked back out. Yeah, and you and put I'm, your arm around me and you walked me out. <laughs> and uh, I remember thinking, okay, I didn't get this because they had me read for the father, so I must have sucked at the other one. But I remember getting laughs in the room, you oh, know, and that it was, was it was always so hard during the audition process to try and get legitimate laughs. And I thought, well, they must not have liked me very much because, you know, I'm reading for the dad. And then I went home and you guys had made an offer. Um, it, it was pretty fast. And Brad Gray called me. Dave, uh, they made an offer on this uh, full house pilot. So, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, give me a call. So, but I remember that day very, very clearly. You got to tell everybody the, what the auditions were like for the Olsen twins. Because there were a bunch of kids that came in, right? Yeah, we, it was baby day. You know, it was time to try <laughs> to cast the baby. And there were about 16 sets of twins wow. that were already in. We had, there was some vacant office that we used. And so there was 32 babies in a room. <laughs> and I'm a, So they're just crawling around? Uh, and yeah, the, yeah. Just... And, and, and 16 moms. Wow. Trying to wrangle, you know, their kids so they're not <laughs> crying and, you know, trying right. to make a good impression. But, uh, you know, I'm a bachelor, single guy. I've never, I haven't, <laughs> I'm not even an uncle in real life yet. I'm, I haven't touched a baby ever, except for when I was one. I think that was the last <laughs> time I touched a baby. So it was bizarre. Like we were just, I, and, you know, where are you from? Tell me about your last project. <laughs> None of that was working. Yeah. You just got to get down on the floor. And but why them? But how did you well, decide? It was, it was just a process of elimination. You know, babies are crying. They're freaking out. The main thing was a stranger is in their face, right. you know, picking up right. strange kids. How are they going to react? You know, if they're freaking out, if they're screaming for their mom or whatever, you know, then you kind of think, all right, this is not somebody that, that is going to really flourish on a sound stage with right. 100 people. <laughs> right. uh, so it really was just a process of elimination. And, and uh, you know, at the end of about 40 minutes, I think it was the Olsen twins and one other, and one other set of twins. And we were, we were on the ground, you know, trying to figure out who to go with. And, you know, they just had these faces, you know, yeah. and they were great with, with, strange people yeah they have they were having a blast uh and you know those those faces were just amazing did stamos even audition did john have to like read because he was already on general hospital and yeah, then he, he did a, you again with jack klugman and he sure, was already a tv was already star right john stamos right you know? right he, so he was really the only name on my list and we had sent him the script uh and they said okay we'll we'll meet you know, yeah. so John and I had a lunch at the Mustache Cafe, which is no longer there. But, right. you know, we'd never, never met, didn't know each other. And we just started talking about Elvis and the Beach Boys <laughs> and yeah. girls and, yeah. did you, you know, who have you dated? Who have you dated? Did we date the same people? <laughs> uh, we spent about two hours just talking, getting to know each other. And it was it was just great. It, time flew by and yeah. we didn't we never talked about the show once. And suddenly he's at valet getting his car about to drive off and i'm like hey 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 wait 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 what what, what about the show you know will, <laughs> right will, right will you do it and he's like yeah yeah okay i'm in and drove off then you and i and john sat down we met was it at the same place i think so i think so i, I like the i like the chocolate cake chocolate cake mm -hmm. started my career <laughs> so then you wanted me to meet with john yeah, you were already set. It right. wasn't an audition. It was just like, hey, I want my two stars to say hi and right. you know get some chemistry going. And so we all had lunch together. So we had lunch together, and uh, John calls you afterwards and says, I thought comics were supposed to be funny. 
<laughs> I was, like, what's going on with this guy? You were very engaging, as you always are, but you know, you weren't I was, on. You I was polite, you doing voices. You right, were doing. Right. Yeah, I think you were probably a little nervous. Maybe I don't know. Of course, I was. But I said, you know, this guy's hilarious. Like, okay, we're going out tomorrow night. I think we we talked you into arranging to do a set like a I, day or two I later, right? I did stand up. Was it Comedy Magic or Comedy Store? I think or? it was like either the Comedy Magic Club or maybe Igby's? Igby, it was Igby's. Igby's. That's right. It was Igby's in Santa anymore, Monica. It's not there. So we went and saw you work and you crushed it. I, I know you remember this Wizard of Oz bit. That yeah, I, I did it on the show. Set with, yeah, I closed with the Wizard of Oz with, thing. With I did all big, the characters. Uh, spinning house prop. Right? I, I had all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. 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 And then you probably got some ideas of, of putting that stuff into the scripts, right? Like, yeah, we, uh, anything we could steal from your act. <laughs> we, and then we, we didn't have to write it. It was already written. Yeah, so, of course. So John's character is originally named Cochran. When did it change to Katsopolis? Was that in the second season? Yeah, after the first season, I think John's dad had been whispering in his ear, like, what's a Cochran? What's that? Right. What's, you know, like, you're Greek. Right. You know, let's, why, why aren't you playing a Greek guy? <laughs> and, and so John said, hey, you know, maybe we could lean into the Greek heritage. It's something else you guys could write to. Could you change my name? And somehow, I think it was one. I think it came from the writers' room. Somehow, Katsopolis name that I had never heard. Right, like half Greek, half Jewish, or something. I don't know. But yeah. Well, I remember talking to you about my character's name. Was it Adam at first, or it was? No, it wasn't Joey. No, he Glanston. was Joey, but I'd never had a last name for Joey. Right, and I so. just said to you one day, "How about Gladstone?" And it made you laugh, and you just said, "Okay." And that was it. That was how yeah, my I'd, character was. I mean, I, there was a restaurant, Gladstones, which was, which was <laughs> right. you know, in Malibu. And right. I'm like, okay, that's a cool name. And I knew a goofy guy from Mark Ridley in Detroit at the Comedy Castle, and he had a brother-in-law, and his last name was Gladstone. And it just popped into my head, and I thought, oh, he's a goofy character. And then I said it to you, you laughed, and that became the, the character's name. Now, I don't know how you feel about this, but John Posey. And originally, we shot the whole pilot with John Posey playing the Danny K Tanner character. And uh, I had never been through something like that. And I thought, after it happened, wow, this is how showbiz happens. But just kind of take us through, because we shot the pilot yeah, at we Lorimar. Were, you know, I had, I mean, initially, I had two names on my list. I wanted Bob Saget, who I was friends with who I had met on uh, Bosom, Bosom Buddies. Buddies, right? He, he was, was the warm-up. He was the audience warm-up right, guy. Right. And that's an impossible job. You have to yeah. you have to kill three hours yeah. with a microphone in your that's hand. That's why I never did it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's impossible. Too hard. And I was amazed by Bob, who, as you know, can never stop speaking. So it was the, <laughs> that was the perfect job for him. He yeah, for sure. He just kept talking for three hours. Yeah. And he's so fast and so quick-witted and so lovable and i just you know i went up to him and i said you know someday you you should be on that stage you should you, you could be a sitcom star and sure. I, I hope I, I hope we get to work together and he's like yeah i want to that would be great and i'll do i'll keep doing the warm-ups too <laughs> which <laughs> i'll warm up my own show yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh so it was bob and paul reiser who uh oh, yeah. i had done a pilot with and yeah who was a really hot yeah. You know, guy at the time. Yeah. And, and he funny. was up for a show called My Two Dads right. and Full House. So he had, I'm like, Paul, we got three dads. We got three girls versus <laughs> one girl. You know, this is, go with go with the extra dad, right. you know? And anyway, so we couldn't find the guy. I mean, I'm sure you remember, we had chemistry tests with every we, actor in town. I mean, me and we, John auditioned. Yeah. Uh, with a ton of guys yeah. playing the father. Yeah. yeah, and it was down to the wire, and we were, were wondering if we shouldn't postpone the pilot to mid-season, you know, because I didn't want to shoot the show with the wrong guy because right. that can kill your show. And John Posey sort of showed up last minute, and he had only really done a couple commercials. He was very, you know, new. Right. And uh, he did fine. He did 
a fine job. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, yeah, and sweetheart of a guy. Yeah, yeah and he was. The show sold with him in it, and there were no red flags, no notes, no like, mm, what about that guy? Nothing. Right. And then out of the blue, Bob got uh, fired from, from the, the CBS C morning program. Right. Right. Yeah, I remember. And, that's, and they would. I was surprised that they wouldn't let him even read for the pilot, but I think because it was ABC, CBS didn't want to do us any favors. But anyway, suddenly Bob's available and interested. Right. And then I had a decision to make because I, you know, Bob's hilarious. Yeah. And, and John was great, but he's not a comedian. You know, he was an actor. And, you know, this is a comedy and you want the three funniest guys you can get. And that cast was so magic. And I just thought if we could just get Bob in there, it would just be them. Well, and then put us over the top. And then John and I did a screen test with Bob and the, on the perfect stranger set. Yeah. So I, that was yeah. kind of a secret chemistry test that I put together. Yeah. To, so I had something to show people because Bob was not an actor either. He was not, he'd done a couple guest shots, but he wasn't really an actor and he wasn't Bob Saget yet. He wasn't right, right. super famous. He was just kind of an up and coming guy. So there's no heat attached to Bob Saget. And all of a sudden, yeah. I'm going around town to ABC and to Lorimar and to Miller Boyette and saying, I want to stop, hold the press. You know, I, I want to reshoot the thing. I want to hire this guy. And, uh, and it's expensive, too. How did you convince them to spend that kind of money? It was almost a million bucks. To Crazy. Resh to reshoot the pilot. Crazy. And to... And to you know, to break John Posey's heart was not fun either. I mean, right. sweet sweetheart of a guy, and you know, to to recast at that point after you know, there's pictures out, there's yeah. press out. Yeah, it was really it was it was tough. It, it was, was tough. really tough, and I just yeah. had this gut instinct that from the beginning that that Bob Bob could be one of those classic TV dads. Yeah. You know, he could be Ward Cleaver, he could be Mike Seaver, he could be, you know, one of those one of those guys. And I just I just fought for him as hard as I could. Yeah. I said, This is gonna make the show so much better. We have to do this. And, you know, it took a lot of convincing and they finally said, Okay, okay. And then we reshot the pilot, we plugged Bob into all the scenes that John Posey had been in. And then Yeah, we didn't reshoot the scenes that, that uh, Danny Tanner was not in. So right. if you watch the pilot, you'll see the baby, you know, the, the Olsen twins are like this big in some scenes and this big in some scenes because, you know, they grew. Four, four months later, she yeah. was yeah, a lot bigger. In that pilot, there are some really funny physical comedy gags. We had the gag where me and John are changing the diaper for the baby. <laughs> which was, I can still watch that scene and it's still pretty darn funny. And then the scene where Jody Sweeten's hanging on the drapes, going across. There was a lot of physical comedy. Did you decide that there was going to be a lot of physical gags in the show? Well, all of that, all of that stuff was in the first draft of the script. You know, I had my first job was on Laverne and Shirley, and you know they were Lucille Ball, they physical. were the Marx Brothers. I yeah. mean, they were incredible incredibly inventive physical comedians so we had so much fun in you know in those days just writing physical comedy for them because they were fearless they'd try anything so i i love it so yeah. i put some stuff in the script of course not knowing if it was ever going to get made or who the cast was going to be right. you know if they would have any ability to do this stuff but you guys were all like just game for anything and really funny physical comedians it just worked out that, and we had Joel Swick directing. Right, right. Joel is also a guy who loves physical loves comedy. Loves physical. He gave me that Dikalakapuka, Dikalakapuka <laughs> thing that I did in one yeah. episode. And I was well, he like, directed my yeah. very first script at Laverne and Shirley. He did. And first thing well, I And he had been around already for many years directing a lot of sitcoms, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he, you he, know, he um, was a hot guy at that point. Yeah, yeah. Now, during the pilot, I remember he got so mad at me. He came storming down from the booth onto the stage because I was goofing around, you know, and I was like, this is the greatest job ever. I just get to goof <laughs> around all the time making people laugh. And I, I guess I had strayed away from the script and I was going off and doing some funny stuff and he wasn't having it. 
and it was right in the very beginning. And so, you know, he came up to me and he's in my face and he's, I can't believe it. You know, I asked for actors and I get co comedians, <laughs> comics, you know, you couldn't act your way out of a paper bag and he's going off on me and I'm just sitting there and everybody's kind of like, ooh, Joel Zwick is beating him up. And I just, he stopped and he's right here and I just looked at him and I said, what are you saying? <laughs> and I could see that it cracked him because I thought this is do or die. If I don't go up against this guy and try and challenge him right now, he's going to eat me for lunch the rest of this show. And so he laughed and he said, what I am saying is, all right, everybody go back to work. Okay, just go, <laughs> just go back to work. We shot on stage 15 at Lorimar, which was like this gigantic airplane hangar. It was, it was the, a, it could easily, you could put an airplane yeah, in there. But it, sure. I mean, it was uh, gigantic. Gone with the Wind was shot there uh, in the old MGM days, like uh, Wizard of Oz. They always told us that the Yellow Brick Road was under the yeah. floor there and they kept saying, oh, we're going to pry it up for you guys someday and, and show you the floor and stuff. How, was it just happenstance that we ended up on that gigantic yeah, the, stage? Basically, this, this, the lot was full. Oh, okay. It was really full. And uh, they said, that's all we have available. So we were in a little corner of this, of this massive building. Yeah. And we were, you know, we put in trailers and bleachers and sets and it took up like five percent of the area and then it was just vacant yeah, building yeah there was this bad echo in there that oh, was, we had to deal with and it i was, you know being a newbie i was like well i guess this is how it is you know you're way at the other end of uh, some gigantic it, it was some ridiculous. gigantic stage Crazy. now of course every episode of of bull house you know had the violin scene you know and tearjerker moment um at one of our, our table reads, early on, you hired a violinist to come strolling through the I reading. don't know who hired that You don't know who no, did I that? I have no idea. It was who, pretty uh, funny. No. It, but not know, everybody thought it was funny. So, well, <laughs> Miller Boyad, Bob and Tom, they, they, they cut their teeth you know, on Gary Marshall's shows, and they right. followed Gary Marshall's formula religiously. And Gary would always score... If there was a sweet scene at the end of the show, he would always put music underneath. Right. So they wanted to do the same thing on Full House. And, you know, I, I was editing the first show, the pilot. I'm like, this is really powerful. Like, these actors are amazing. This is a, this is a beautiful scene that stands yeah. on its own. Yeah. We don't need to put violins underneath this scene. We don't need to tell the audience how to feel. You know this. You know it's very common to do that in in movies, but mm -hmm. you know not every, not not every sitcom has you know sweet little music playing at the end of every show, and so we we fought about it a lot. I didn't want it, and they did, and <laughs> you know they somehow pre prevailed. So you know that music was playing Sorry. under all the scenes, and it drove me nuts, and it drove the the uh, the rest of the writers nuts, and everybody made fun of it, and like, yeah. oh, here come the violins, and I don't know, somehow I just thought it would be funny to have uh, some violins at the table read, so <laughs> they're so reading funny. this, you guys are reading the script one week, and here <laughs> comes the sweet scene at the end, and somebody who's sitting in the back pulls out a violin and starts playing the theme <laughs> song. <laughs> live underneath the cast reading and Pretty everybody funny. cracked up except Pretty for funny. bob and tom you can see the steam coming oh, yeah, out of their yeah. ears and i'm like who thought this would be funny <laughs> who, who who came who did this i want to know right now and uh but they knew <laughs> do you, uh do you have a favorite episode uh, i have a couple couple i mean i the pilot pilot's really yeah, special it is to me yeah. i mean that was just one one in a zillion, once in a lifetime. Uh, and I loved, there was one called Mad Money that uh, where John played Elvis. And uh, this was <laughs> sort of like all these influences of my life coming together in one show and I got to direct it. And that was, I, I love that one. My mom is in it. She has a bit <laughs> with John's mom together and it just meant a lot to me. And then uh, there's a show called Hole in the Wall. I don't know if you remember that, hmm. where uh, the girls are in Danny's bedroom and they're messing around and they end up uh, 
putting a big hole in the in the wall of the bedroom and they have to figure out how to spackle it and and hide it from Danny and it just was a perfect episode I thought one of my favorites and the hundredth where the twins are born right. uh, to you know, Jesse and Becky's kids yeah that was a huge milestone and, yeah and uh I got to direct that one too, and it was just yeah. We had incredible guests along the way. I mean, you think back, some of the guests we had: Mickey Rooney, Little Richard, uh, Phyllis Diller. I mean, it was just <laughs> the Beach Boys. It was so eclectic. Uh, yeah. You know, Tiffany comes on, and uh, it was just so so like such a hodgepodge. Frankie well, Avalon. We, we and tried Matt. for Paul Newman, you know, for some <laughs> reason we you know the, couldn't get him. But yeah, we had some fun guest stars. Uh, we had. Whitman Mayo from Sanford and Son, who played Grady. Yeah, who was Grady, yeah. June Lockhart, who was Lassie's mom. Right. Uh, we had uh, Frankie and Annette, uh, and and I th and one of the funniest guest stars we had was was Urkel. Yeah, Jaleel. Jaleel. His episode was great. Yeah, the scene with him and Stamos, you know, teaching each other how to do a cool walk <laughs> right. was classic, and. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorites, my best friend when I was growing up, who's still one of my best friends, Rick Astor, played the stage manager in Star Search. And just <laughs> having my childhood buddy that I've known since kindergarten yeah. on my show yeah. was, was pretty cool. Well, and, you know, and we had the moms. I mean, uh, Janice Sweeten was on an episode with Barbara. Yep. Um, you know, they came on. And it was, uh, I mean, it really truly... It truly was a, a family. I think back to how did we make it through some of those times? We had some really tough times, you know. I lost my sister Sharon. Bob lost both of his sisters, Gay and Andy. Um, you know, uh, you and I and John and Bob, we all lost our moms. That was you know really freaky because all all of our mothers passed away within nine months of each yeah. other. Yeah. Was, we were just going from funeral to funeral. Yeah. And uh, I, mean, I mean, I'm just like, guys, hey, it's cool that we do everything together. But, you know, <laughs> is this is this really necessary? Yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and you think about it, though, we really are a family. I mean, it's just like, I know I can call you anytime for anything and you'll be there, you know, and it's 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 special it, on so many different levels. But you never, ever expect that to happen on a TV series, it, you know, because most people just you work, of. you work and you you split and you go your separate ways yeah, on to different projects. You're a family, projects. and then the project ends, but and us, then you're not. But it's this different. Is, this is this is this is one. This doesn't happen either. Full House doesn't happen, and that <laughs> doesn't happen. Uh -oh. In a nor, you know, this is this is miraculous. I mean, I, you know, I I love all of you guys so much. You know, I would say more than my real family. We love you too. I mean, it's just you know, I, I was talking earlier in the in your intro just about you know how much basically it's a love fest, you know, about you, and um, you know, I, I also uh, have never really watched Full House. I've never really really no. I never <laughs> you know my son Luke watched it and he used to call it Daddy's Show. And I would get him to eat his broccoli and his vegetables. You know, I would say, okay, you can watch daddy's show. And I would hear him laughing, you know, watching episodes when he was little. And dad, you just did the funniest thing. And I'm like, oh, you know, and I would kind of peek in. But I've never really sat down and, and watched the show. So Full House Rewind for me is like a whole journey of watching all of these episodes over again. You know, and it's, and it's amazing because you really get to see our family kind of Come together, not just on camera, but I start remembering all of the things we did. You and John and I went to Hawaii together. We, you know, we went to Vegas. We did so yeah. many things. Yeah, like we spend, you know, day and night together for nine months. The season <laughs> ends, and you would think we might want to take a day off. <laughs> no, and we all go on vacation together. Right. It was just, it really was. Uh, it's remarkable. I, I've never heard of of any show where that's happened. Where, where people really fell in love with each other and stayed this close yeah. for this many years. It's, it's amazing. It really is. You were so patient with us, uh, especially in those early years, because Bob <laughs> would goof around. He would take over our note sessions yeah. and just do his, <laughs> you know, cut himself open and do all this bizarre stuff. And I, I, 
I start, you know, as I'm reminiscing about all those shows, I, I had to think about those note sessions where you would just sit there and you would just laugh. And you were so patient with us. And I just thought one of these days, Jeff is going to just lose it on us. And you never did. But I mean, that had to be well, awful sometimes because well, you were trying to, you had to get back to the writer's room yeah, with all it the would, notes. It would, I mean, you know, it took what should have been a 15 minute <laughs> note session and turned it into an hour. But, and that backed up our night and we were there 45 minutes longer than we probably should have been but uh it was funny but the, you know what i don't want to be the guy going hey stop being funny <laughs> you know it, you guys are hilarious you know, had, it was mainly you and bob and then well and and you know john would join in now and then but mainly he'd roll his eyes and go hey you know let's get out of here <laughs> and, and Lori was just a good sport yeah good times though boy and and uh you get to think about all these moments again because you have a book coming out yeah, I'm taking a shot of writing uh, writing my version of, of the Full House well, story. We've, we've already done some interviews together. Yeah. Uh, we were with the girls down in, uh, where were we? Where were we in? We were at 90s Con. Hartford, in right? In Hartford. In Hartford. Yes. And you came up from Florida. And we sat. We had a great dinner. And it was really fun. And, and you started asking us questions like, how's the book coming along? What, do you have a title for it? I have a, I have a couple, yeah. but oh, okay. I haven't right. decided you yet. You don't have to say yet. You don't have to say I, yet. But how's it coming along? Are you like it's halfway? Really fun. It's, I'm having fun. You know, I'm about a third of the way through it, and uh, you, you'll uh, I will let you know when I have a title so you can plug it for me. Oh, but, okay, uh, perfect. Yeah, this. I mean, what you're doing here is is incredible. Like, I, I love this. This is just an incredible idea. I really hope. Oh, uh, thanks. People stick with it, and uh, you're actually doing. 192 of these things we want to do all 192 <laughs> of them yes i mean it's that's it's a big challenge i mean that's but every episode every single episode we want you, to you want to tie a show into each episode absolutely absolutely and we've yes. got you know comet and mr Woodshock you have no life dave you have nothing else to do, i don't do you? i don't <laughs> well i'm building i'm building a house in michigan which uh, is coming along so you know that keeps me pretty busy but i'm really passionate about this show because i know how passionate the fans are we've changed people's lives which is really wow. incredible and you know that that's that's why it's so important that you be the first guest because it all started with you. And I mean, it's pretty amazing that an idea that was in your head has, you know, become this institution for so many kids and parents and people worldwide. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, it, it was a very unique show for a number of reasons. The, the, the chemistry of the cast, the love that came through the TV screen mm -hmm. is it, very, and you could feel it. Uh, the message of the show that that these these two guys are willing to sacrifice so much, you know, so much yeah. of their lives as young single guys to help take care of kids that aren't even their own. I mean that that's a that's a really profound, you know, message. The fact that these guys have this sort of oddball family that that is so unique. You know, I've never heard. In all these years, no, I've never heard once, you know, well, that's so weird because I live with <laughs> my best friend and uh, my brother-in-law and we take right. care of kids. And right. Never heard that, uh, and, ever. But, you know, we did get rifled by the press when we first came out. Oh, the reviews were Reviews were horrible, horrible, terrible. Right? Horrible. And, and the ratings were terrible the first season too, right? Yeah, we, we were almost gone a, a couple times. Yeah. yeah. It, the, just the survival of the show is also miraculous yeah too yeah we were almost canceled we were able to eke out the first season and then abc moved us behind who's the boss that whole summer after right. the first season and suddenly we were on tuesday nights and behind the number one show in on abc and people discovered full house and and we came and then we back moved back to, to friday, friday right yeah. and suddenly we we were a hit. Yeah, we crazy. were this close to being gone, and suddenly everybody's talking about Full House. This has been just amazing to catch up, not just about the show, but with you. And uh, you know, our our audience is going to love some of this 
behind the scenes stuff. And um, I just want to thank you for being here. It means a lot to me that you're here on the first show, of course. And we get to do one more thing before we say goodbye because it's time for Aw, Cut It Out. Oh, cut it out. Of course, every episode of Full House had a heartfelt scene and we have cut out a scene from the pilot that you and I are going to read together. So Jeff, here is your script and it, and it truly is your script. So we're going to read the, uh, the scene with Danny, DJ, and Stephanie from our very first show, the pilot. So um, here we go. I'm, I'm reading which, you're reading, which role? <laughs> you're reading Danny. So I'll be, I'll be DJ and Stephanie, and you're going to uh, read. You're going you're gonna to understand you're gonna why, I, why I Why Gary Shandling said that to you? being an actor, yes. <laughs> okay. going to be obvious. Here we go. All right. Ready? Wow. What is it, honey? It's just not fair. First I lose my mom, then grandma leaves. Now I even lose my own room. Everything keeps disappearing. I know exactly how you feel. And I know how much you girls miss your mother. Because I miss her too. Very much. But you still got me. You got me too. And you got Michelle. And you have your uncle Jesse and Joey. DJ, we're still a family. And now is when we really need to stick together. DJ, you and I, we go back a long time. Ten years. The ten happiest years of my life. So look, it's up to you. Either you move back inside, or all five of us are moving into the garage. But nothing is going to break up this team. I'll move back in. I love you, Angel. You too, little <laughs> ballerina. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Author. Author. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Always brings a tear to my eye. It was so great having Jeff Franklin here for our very first episode, giving us some great Full House trivia and some pretty cool fun facts. Here's another weird fun fact. When Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen were babies, they couldn't be on the set for very long because, well, they were babies. So we had a stand-in doll slash baby that we would put in their place so we could position them in the scene. It looked a little something like this. Yeah, we thought we'd put her on our Full House Rewind set just to give you an idea of how weird that was. She just looks so real, doesn't she? Full House videos seem to be everywhere you look on the internet. And we like to bring them to you on Full House Rewind. So here, take a look. I named my smart bulbs after Full House. Alexa, turn on Danny, Joey, Uncle Jesse. DJ, Stephanie, Michelle, Aunt Becky, Nikki, Alex, Kimmy, Steve, Comet, Alexa, Full House, Activate. I guess all I can say is how many Full House fans does it take to screw in a light bulb? That's a very bright idea. Waka, waka, waka. Have you got a video you'd like to send us? We'd love to hear from you. So send us the link to your video at fullhouserewind at podcode.us. Somebody's at the door. Hey, Dave. Hey, look, it's my buddy, Mr. Woodchuck. The show is looking great, Dave. Well, thank you, Mr. Woodchuck. Um, one question, Dave. What's that? Is this set made of wood? <laughs> A lot of it, yes. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to splinter the show. You naughty pine, get out of here. Okay, see you, Dave. See you, Mr. Woodchuck. You know, I sure appreciate that little chucker stopping by, which leads me to how much we appreciate you, the Full House fans. It's time for You Got It, Dude. You got it, dude. Throughout the show, we'd like to give one of our lucky Full House Rewind audience members something special. So I have got a Full House Cut It Out t-shirt autographed by moi. Remember to email us at fullhouserewind at podco.us eligible for our next giveaway. It's like my grandma used to say, it's better to give than to receive unless you win the lottery. Wow, speaking of grandmas, 
It's our neighbor, Granny Tanny. Hello, David. Hi, Granny Tanner. I just love this Full House Rewind thing you're doing. I've been watching it on YouTube, and I thought, those kids over there probably need a pie, so I baked you a pie. Wow, thank you, Granny Tanny. That looks delicious. Well, don't get everything all sticky. Make sure you wash your hands before and after. And make sure you brush your teeth. I sure will, Granny Tanny. And be nice to everyone. Okay, I will. And I love Comet, but he chased that squirrel right into my house. Okay, I'll I'll take care of that. Thank you, David. You're a good boy. I've got to run. I mean, I've literally got to run in the San Francisco Marathon, so I've got to go and put on my new running shoes. (laughs) Bye, David. Bye, Granny Tanner. Which, of course... Rhymes with Danny Tanner, my beloved friend and brother, Bob Saget, who left this planet much too early. I met Bob when I was an 18-year-old stand-up comic in Detroit, and we became instant friends. Bob meant a lot to everyone. He could make you laugh until you cried. He would listen to you with his heart, and then he would hug you. We're dedicating this first episode of Full House Rewind to Bob Saget, who will always be the lovable Danny Tanner to all of us. So in the spirit of Bob Saget, we'd like to close every episode of Full House Rewind by giving all of you who need it a hug. So here it is, your Full House hug. Bring it in. Yeah, that's better. And that's our show. We'd like to thank Jeff Franklin for stopping by and thank you for listening and watching. You are the heart and soul of Full House Rewind. Now go out there and share the love. So long. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Full House Rewind. To watch clips from the pod, Go check out Podco's YouTube channel at the link in the description. We'll see you next week.